G'day Carbonites, welcome to Inside Arc. So in this series we go through Community Crunch and Arc Digest, which I think they're released every week. Um, with an exception if the devs are too busy or whatever, but um, generally speaking it's, it's every week. This is something that I look forward to every week. Um, basically, the Arc Digest is a chance where we can ask the devs questions about the game, what, what they're going to be adding, um, if they can add something. Um, basically, it, it's, it gives you a really good insight as to where the game's headed and what sort of a time frame things are going to be added. So I always look forward to reading this. And obviously the Community Crunch is where uh, fan-made um, fan -made, um, structures and artwork and things like that um, get put up for everyone to see, which is really cool. So I thought it'd be really cool to actually share this with you guys and maybe discuss some things. Because um, I, yeah, I look forward to this every week. So uh, we're on to Community Crunch... Community Crunch 54 and Arc Digest 36. So the Arc Digest, I'm just going to go through the things that interest me. Um, so the first one here we have, uh, with the Allosaurus on the way, two of its abilities, the Alpha Pack Leader and the Bleed Effect, are big things for it. Are we going to see both of these things added with the Allosaurus and possibly see the Alpha Pack boost for the Direwolves and the Bleed Effect added for the Megaloceros at the same time. And uh, I think it's Jeremy that replies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it says right there. Um, so uh, Jeremy says, um, he's the lead designer and lead programmer, co-founder. <laughs> he's, he's the big guy. So he replies, uh, indeed, shortly after the introduction of the Allosaurus and its alpha pack system, the Dire Wolf will get a similar implement implementation and the bleed effect implementation of the Megaloceros will also be modified to be comparable with the Allosaurus. So that's um, that's really cool. I like that they're going to add new, like they, they keep adding on to the mechanics of the d different dinosaurs. It's not just a new looking dinosaur, you know, like they do different things. That's, that's really cool. Okay, so this next one, this is uh, pretty crucial in in my mind anyway. Um, Survivor N. Chaffel asks, I currently have to type in r.bloomquality0 and r.lightshaft0 every time I log in to avoid being blinded by light sources, reflecting off most objects in the game, especially metal. Can that option be added to the current persistent graphics settings? And Jeremy replies, yes, I'll get that added in PC's next major update. So next major update, I think that's what we're on 245 at the moment, I think. So that would be that'll be 246, I guess. That, to me, that that that's a major update. Um, so that that would be amazing if we can get that done. I'd also I'd love to see um, like a percentage that you could adjust it instead of just having either bloom on or off, like maybe have it set at like 20% and instead of typing zero, you put 0 0.2. I think, yeah, that would be really cool. Cause I do enjoy those like graphical um, aspects of it, but yeah, it's just at a hundred percent, it's just killer. Okay, so this one from Survivor Aztec, he asks, well, she asks, I don't know. <laughs> can you make it so we can choose to craft items by multiples of 10 instead of one at a time or the maximum number we can make? It gets annoying to click 20 times so I can make 20 narcotics. I'd prefer to only have to click twice. And Jeremy replies, yeah, I'll have shift clicking on the craft button perform 10 times crafting in the next major update. I'll have a similar modifier implemented on the Xbox as well. So that'd be good. Xbox players will get something similar where you just hold down a button when you hit the craft button and it'll automatically times that by 10. So that'd be cool. Um, and that'll bring it in line with a lot of other uh, crafting games as well. I'll, yeah, most of the time you'll see 
uh, shift modifiers or something like that be used, which is really good. Okay, so the next two are my favorite out of this week's Arc Digest. Um, Silvis, I think, Survivor Silvis, asks, can we get a button for toggling snap points on Xbox? I know why switches, walls, and doors. Does it? Does why really switch doors around? We don't have that. <laughs> um, but I would like to... Uh, uh, but I would like a button to toggle all available snap points. And Jeremy replies, yes, a key button cycling between available snap points will be added to both Xbox and PC soon. In the case of PC, it'll be done in the next major. Major's done in uh, in double quotes, so I'm not sure what it... <laughs> Maybe it'll be like the third one. <laughs> and shortly thereafter for Xbox. So that'll be awesome. Uh, instead of having the snap points just flicker like off the chain like they're having an epileptic fit or something <laughs> we'll be able to actually change with a button that'd be cool and the next one survivor cody glovel asks one of the biggest issues with building is the clipping is it possible to put something in a dot ini file to disable clipping for a private server and Jeremy replies, sure, in the next major PC update, I'll add a server option to disable that. Though, perf though for performance and trolling reasons, I wouldn't recommend it unless you trust your server's players not to exploit or are uh, role-playing. So that will be amazing. Can you imagine being able to build walls into the ground? and just have everything looking flush without having to do any tricks or anything. If you're building out of stone, it's not that bad because you can use the, the trick with the stone foundations and raising and lowering it. But for things like um, wood, where the wood foundations are just like, they don't block anything out. They're, they're, they're basically see-through. It would be good to have walls go down. So... I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a performance hit it would take. Um, I'm not sure if they're talking about like a large scale, like, you know, 30 people on a server or, you know, 70 people on a server, all like clipping things together. And I could understand that might be a performance hit, but if it's just me building, like, I can't see it being too much of an issue. Anyway, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be cool. So it looks like the next major PC update is going to be massive. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Um, lot, lots of things get cut at the last second and um, they rearrange where they're going to release certain aspects, which is understandable. They, they've got a lot of stuff they've got to add in each update. Okay, so moving on to... Moving on to the Community Crunch 54, um, there's only a couple of sections I want to cover. First one is the Architect section. So this is um, basically uh, building structures, uh, and it gets uh, it gets judged upon a number of different factors such as creativity, uniqueness, how fun of a base it is, the difficulty of building it, the functionality it provides. And much more. So, they they judge it on quite a few different factors. So the winner was um, the Dodia Pyramid by Tomb, and this thing is amazing. Honestly, this picture here doesn't give it justice. I mean, when you look at this, you go, "Ah, oh, it's a pyramid. Good on you." But the amount of detail and everything that went inside it is absolutely amazing. So I'll show a couple of pictures um, in here, but there's a full album on Imager, which I'll link um, in the description, and you should definitely go and check it out because it's really, really cool. So it was made on a, a role-playing server, and uh, I think he was a shaman, I think, uh, I think it was a shaman, and um, there's like all totems and stuff in there, and yeah, it just it looks really really cool. 
So we got three runners up as well. Um, Monkey Puzzle with his treehouse, very cool. I'll link um, I'll link that video in the description as well, so you can check that out. Uh, Hyla, Hylia, Hylia. I have no idea. It's a shield. <laughs> That's um, it's crazy. Oh, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe how big he made that. Uh, and then we've got a redwood tree house, which actually looks really, really cool. Um, I, I thought it was very well done. Okay, so there um, recently was a new section added, which is Arc Video. And it's a contest where you can upload a video and it's, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be funny, it could be epic, scenic, um, it could be a story, whatever. Um, so the the winner was uh, the a video by Thick Freedom, of course, <laughs> and it was the "Is Ark the Best Looking Survival Game of 2016" video that he did recently. And um, yeah, I agree. It, amazing video, very well done. So once again, link for that in the description. I'm also going to put a link for. Um, this actual, um, this actual uh, post. So if you want to read through everything, um, you definitely can. And the runners up for the, um, for the video category was um, Raging Cyanide with his Ark Redwood Forests are beautiful cinematic film. Uh, and yes, definitely uh, another amazing film. Really, really good. I love the cinematics. And we also had uh, the Ranger Chronicles 13 uh, by Virtual Realms. Very cool. All right, I think that's going to do it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed going over the uh, Arc Digest, seeing what's coming out very soon, and uh, the winners of the Community Crunch 54. If you did, make sure you smash that like button for me. Don't forget to lead your targets, and I will see you next time.